did my petition, signed the petition against the girls. All right, guys. Good to see everybody tonight. Seasons are starting to change. The light outside is starting to feel a little different on Wednesdays. All right. Hey, uh, next week, uh, those of you who are on, uh, who watch us on Facebook, will be late uh, logging in because we'll have our regular uh, quarterly business meeting. Once we finish that up, we'll uh, we'll log on and uh, have our Bible study time. But it's time for the quarterly business meeting next week. I know y'all are excited. I can just tell how excited y'all are. All right, y'all take your Bibles, turn to 2 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 15. We are, I told you when we started this, one of the reasons I'm going through this is I don't, I've never really understood 2 Corinthians very well, so we'll just figure it out together. when you turn the fog, you know, the, the deep frog on, that's what I call it, the deep fog, uh, in your car, it's starting to get a little bit better, but maybe we'll figure it out by the time we get to the end. Uh, but tonight we're in some verses where uh, Paul is going to begin to talk about some of the problems that the church of Corinth has had with him. Specifically, their problem was going to be that he said he was going to do one thing. He had some plans to travel to them, and then he didn't, and and they didn't like that. And so, but he's going to make a case that you know sometimes things happen, and uh, we all often plan and end up those things not taking place. So let me read it to you. This is Second Corinthians chapter one, fifteen through twenty-two. He says. In this confidence, I intended at first to come to you, so that you might twice that is, to pass your again from Macedonia to come to you, and by you to be helped on my journey to Judea. Therefore, I was not vacillating when I intended to do this, was I? Or what I purpose, did I purpose according to the flesh, so that uh, with me there will be yes, Yes and no, no at the same time. But as God is faithful, our word to you is not yes and no. For the Son of God, Christ Jesus, who was preached among you by us, by me and Silvanus and Timothy, was not yes and no, but is yes in him. For as many as are the promises of God, in him they are yes. Therefore also through him is our amen to the glory of God through us. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us is God, who also sealed us and gave us the Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. Clear as crystal, right? Makes perfect sense. <laughs> what is he talking about? Um, well, he had planned to go see them. Plans didn't work out, and they were frustrated about that. Uh, in fact, let me read it to you in, uh, in, at the end of 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians 16, he wrote this in, in verse 5. He says, But I will come to you after I go through Macedonia, for I'm going through Macedonia, and perhaps I'll stay with you or even spend the winter, so that you may send me on my way wherever I may go. For I do not wish to see you now just in passing, for I hope to remain with you for some time, if the Lord permits. And then uh, verse 8 of 1 Corinthians 16, But I will remain in Ephesus until Pentecost, for a wide door for effective service has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. But all those plans didn't work out, and that's the issue. Uh, that's one of the reasons. Now, remember, the church at Corinth isn't exactly, um, if they're mad at you, that doesn't necessarily mean that you did anything wrong. Uh, because they're, they're a pretty, you know, uh, immature group of people in their faith. If you go back to the, to the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, they had major, major sin in that church. 
um, just all kinds of things. They had division. They had inappropriate relationships. They were abusing uh, spiritual gifts. They were abusing the Lord's Supper. Uh, it was just, it was, it, was, it was awful. It was absolutely terrible. And uh, that's one of the reasons Paul wrote, we think, uh, four letters to them. Uh, God preserved letter two and four. We don't have one and three. Because he just, this was the one he had to deal with. This was the problem child, uh, if you want to put it that way, because he was the founder, uh, the one who God used to, to birth this church. So go back to verse 15. He says, In this confidence, I intended at first to come to you so that you might twice receive a blessing. And then he explains that in verse 16. That is to pass your way into Macedonia. And again for Macedonia to come to you. So that's the twice blessing. They're going to be together and build one another up twice. And by you be helped on my journey to Judea. One of the things that crops up in Paul's letters as you trace it throughout his ministry is he was collecting a, uh, an offering for the church in Jerusalem. They were very poor. Everybody, when, when, when the uh, persecution against Stephen uh, broke out, and I just came across that in my quiet time the other day, um, no, I just read it this morning, his sermon, by the way. Uh, it's fascinating to read Stephen's speech or his sermon that he gives as he traces the history of Israel. It's really interesting. Uh, but when that happened, the believers in Jerusalem scattered, and very few were left. And they ended up, uh, it's our, it's, there's some irony in this, that the church where everything got started ended up being quite poor uh, and quite needy. And so Paul is taking up a collection for them, and he talks about it in some of his letters. He mentions this thing. And so that's what he's talking about here. He, his original plan, he was going to see them in Corinth. He was going to go on, and then he was going to come back through. And then maybe they would be able to take up an offering and, uh, and send that on with him or with an, a, an ambassador, whoever it might be. So that was the plan, but it didn't happen. So here's where he starts to get wordy and philosophical. Um, Here's what he says. Therefore, this verse 17. Therefore, I was not vacillating when I intended to do this, was I? In other words, he said, this was my plan. I wasn't just, you know, willy-nilly doing this. I had a purpose here. He says, or what I purposed, did I purpose according to the flesh? So now they would have accused him maybe of doing these things not in a spiritual manner, but in a fleshly manner. Like he wasn't seeking the Lord's will and making sure this is what God wanted him to do. So that to me... There will be yes, yes and no, no. And then my version, if you have it in italics, says at the same time. That means the translators put that in there just to try to, for some clarification. So it literally literally reads, there will be yes, yes and no, no. What's he talking about? Well, there's a lot of things, and, and I'll read you some verses from other parts of Scripture that really where this comes from the idea is Paul is is challenging them to say it's my paraphrase you don't actually believe I'm honest that that's that's the crux of it because he's he's saying basically y'all think I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth I'm saying yes and I'm saying no I'm hedging my bets so that whatever the circumstances are I'll say see I was right whether, whether yes was appropriate or whether no was appropriate. Uh, sort of a, a double talk kind of idea. Uh, remember what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew five thirty six. He says, Nor shall you make an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. It's your children, by the way, that make your hair white, in case you're wondering. Verse 37, But let your statement be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything beyond these is of evil. Think about it. God is truth. God is the ultimate trustworthy being. When you and I look at somebody as ambassadors of Christ, as Christians, we are to say what we mean. And we're to do it with with the full intention of honoring what we say. So, you know, don't, don't hem haw about and, and all of that. It, I think about when my, when my girls were little. They would come and... They would, they would ask for something, but they'd come around the back side trying to ask for it. And, and I would say to them, stop, ask the whole question. And then they'd, they'd 
say the whole thing, whatever it might be. Um, you know, usually had something to do with cheese its or goldfish or something like that. But, you know, real important stuff. But that idea of saying what you mean and meaning what you say. The world has fallen. The world is not trustworthy. Uh, people will look you in the face and lie to you and then turn around and say the exact opposite to the next person and be lying to them too. Uh, you know, it's, uh, think, about, think about the world's ability to lie right now. We have never been in a worse position for someone to lie about us. There is technology out there and I know this from watching behind the scenes things about movies and stuff. Um, if you guys know what a deep fake is, a deep fake is where they can pretty much go in and if they've got a picture of you, they can just about scan that thing and make it look like, and to our eyes, we perceive it as real because the, the technology, digital technology has gotten so good. They can make it look like you said anything and it's really difficult to dispute that. Um, there's a lot of ethical considerations about that, about how should those files be created? Should there be some kind of tag in that file so that you can tell this is something that has been created with this technology? Um, you can abs People can convince the world now that you did something that you didn't do. And where before you'd be like, look, here's the proof. Here's the video. I didn't do it. You can't even trust that anymore. Um, so, and this all came about out of the movie industry. It came out of, um, if you, out of the, um, specifically like the Marvel movies, like Ant-Man and all those. If you go back and watch those movies, they have older actors in those movies and they'll do flashbacks and they'll de-age those actors. So if you watch, um, oh, for instance, if you watch one of the Ant-Man movies, You'll have Michael Douglas. I really, I'm going somewhere with this, I promise you. Yeah, Michael Douglas at his current age. And then they de-aged him for flashbacks. He was still in the scene. He was still doing the acting. But they de-aged him, and they took what he looked like on that, uh, what was that cop show he was on, uh, Streets of San Francisco in the 70s. They used that as the model. And, and they were able to de-age him. Well, that technology is to the point where they can just manipulate that, and it can look like you've done anything. And our eyes don't, our eyes pretty much can't tell the difference anymore. We used to be able to spot that sort of stuff. When something wasn't quite right, wasn't quite real, we could catch it. That has changed. So this is why it's so important for us to be people of integrity. Because the world now has even more weapons to not have integrity, to not tell the truth. If God himself is truth and is the definition of truth, then everything you and I are about should be the truth. Um, so let me soapbox for half a second again, and then I'm going to get back. I'll get back to the text. This is why you and I have to be real careful on things like Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or emails or whatever it is that we don't end up disseminating and sharing stories and things that aren't true. Right, whether it's you know conspiracy theory stuff or news reports or things that are that, that aren't aren't real, uh, we get caught up in that. Somebody shares it on Facebook that looks good, it sounds good because we agree with it politically or theologically or whatever, and then we share it, and it turns out that person never actually said this or that thing never actually happened. Um, you know, the, the example, sort of a harmless example, but the one that I, I know I've used in a sermon here before. And I remember hearing about this. There was a, a long-winded story that I heard as a child, and you probably heard preachers use it over the years, about how uh, you know, NASA was trying to account for every day that had ever existed, and they realized that you know, they were one day short. And that was the, the long day in Joshua and all this. And then they realized they were a few hours off. And that was when the, 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 the shadow went backwards. And I was, I mean, it's just long, elaborate illustrations. And they, they would tag, they would say, and it, you know, NASA did this. And the scientists, you know, couldn't believe it. And when they realized what it was, several of them came to faith in Christ. It's a great story. The problem is it's not true. It never happened. Um, NASA used to have a thing. They used to get calls about it all the time. And they were like, no, this, is, this, never, this never happened. Uh, and so, or my generation, you know, all of our parents were scared to death on Halloween. 
that everything's going to have razor blades and all that stuff in it. It happened in one town and like one person did it, but we were all convinced the whole world was doing this, right? And, and we just sort of share that stuff. We have to make sure that the things that we say are true and that we don't push things that are false because what are we telling the world? We're telling the world to believe that somebody died and then came back to life. That's the gospel. Death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you and I are buying into crazy, you know, false conspiracy theories or stories or just sharing stuff that, you know, that you just can look at it and anybody who does a little bit of research realizes this isn't true. And people say, oh, y'all believe that. Well, why in the world would they believe when we tell them this is true, what Jesus did? So, I mean, we have to have integrity in everything, uh, in the things we say, in the things we share, in the things that we do. And that's what Paul is coming back to here, is that they're basically accusing him of not saying what is true or trying to hedge his bets. So the half-brother of Jesus, James, kind of echoed the Sermon on the Mount when he said, But above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but your yes is to be yes, your no, no, so that you may not fall under judgment. So we have to be people of integrity. And they're questioning his integrity. So let me go back to verse 17. He says, Therefore, I was not vacillating when I intended to do this, was I? Or what I purpose, did I purpose according to the flesh, so that with me there will be yes, yes, and no, no at the same time. But then he, he, he points out now where truth comes from. But as God is faithful, our word to you is not yes and no. So here's what Paul says. Paul is saying his standard of integrity, our standard of integrity, should be God. That's it. That he always tells the truth. We can't be our own standard of integrity because every one of us throws out a white lie every now and then, right? It just happens. You get caught off guard and, you know, you go to the doctor, how much do you weigh? You go to the doctor and, you know, how, for, you know, how tall are you? Or, you know, how much, you know, they ask you about your diet or whatever. It's real easy to fudge in those situations and we tend to justify it. You know, they're going to find out the truth anyway. You might as well tell them. Right? But we all, we all, you know, officer, I, I, I didn't think I was speeding. When you knew very well, you were in a hurry, and you hoped you could get, get away. We all do it, right? Unfortunately, you know, we need to repent of those things, and every part of our life should be under the lordship of Christ, but we're not perfected yet. We all struggle with this stuff. And so our standard of integrity can't just be good people, because even good people mess up. Even good people and good neighbors and good parents and, you know, good Christians, everybody still messes up. But God never changes. He's always faithful. He's always true. He is our goal. His, his nature is our standard. He keeps going in verse 19. For the Son of God, Christ Jesus, who was preached among you by us. And then he mentions us. He says me. So that's Paul. Silvanus, that's Silas. You remember Paul and Silas that, that were on the mission together. And Timothy. So this is, you know, his two traveling companions. So he mentions all those. He goes, was not yes and no, but is yes in him. That the ultimate yes, the ultimate truth is Christ. And that is our standard of truth. That's why we are to be people of integrity. That's who Jesus is. Absolutely no sin in him. Jesus never told a white lie. Ever. And that's an amazing thing. He never stubbed his toe. And said something he shouldn't. Right? He didn't do that. I mean, and, and that, you start thinking about the mundane of not sinning. Right? I mean, we can, the big stuff, we kind of make sense. Right? You know, hadn't killed anybody, hadn't robbed a bank, you know, hadn't, you know, all those, the, the big stuff we get. But it's the little things. You know, the, the little things where we might say something to make ourselves look a little better than we are. Or we're caught up in a, I'm, I'm listening to a book right now. Yeah, I did say that. I'm listening to a book. Just, and I'm listening to a book about listening. 
it's really about public speaking. It's about speaking. That's why I'm listening to it because I'm always trying to, you know, think about preaching and, and speaking and all that. But the guy is a sound expert, so he's spending quite a bit of time on it, on listening. And today he was talking about one of the, when I was listening to it, he was talking about the, uh, um, what do you call it? He called it leaks, you know, like you're leaking. It's something that sort of weakens you. And we all want to look good to everybody else. We always want to present our best self. And so he, he actually said in the book, he said, have you ever claimed to have read a book that maybe you didn't really read? Like everybody, somebody mentioned a book, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, I've read that. Or that you say you said you've seen a movie that you haven't really seen because the, so, the social setting, you know, just sort of made you, and you think later, why did I even say that? You know, what's, you know, what's the big deal? That's the idea. And so yes needs to be yes and no needs to be no. So he points that this comes from Jesus. So he says in verse 20, for as many as are the promises of God... In him they are yes, therefore also through him is our amen, or true, that's what amen means, truly, to the glory of God through us. So he goes back to the nature of God. For as many as are the promises of God, in him they are yes. All of his promises are true, complete integrity in all he says. Therefore also through him, so through God, is our amen, our truly, our agreement to the glory of God through us. And then he goes ultimately to the gospel, because that's where all this comes from. Verse 21, now he who establishes us with you in Christ, so Paul's saying we're all in this together, right? He's talking to other Christians, and anointed us in God, who set us apart, who also sealed us and gave us the Spirit in our hearts as a pledge or as a, a down payment. You may have a little note in your Bible. It's kind of like earnest money in a... In a um, Real estate transaction. That's the basic idea. Paul starts with, it's amazing what he does here. He starts with, y'all don't believe me. Y'all think I'm making stuff up. You think I'm not being honest. You think I'm saying two things. One thing out of each, each of the sides of my mouth. But I'm telling you that I'm seeking to live with integrity. Not because of anything to do with Paul, but everything to do with the nature of God. And ultimately he gets back to the gospel which is where everything lands anyway, right? How can you and I live with integrity? Without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God and without the renewal that comes through salvation, um, any honesty or integrity or whatever it is, is just out of sheer will. And sometimes the will gets tired. Sometimes the will gives up. You know, willpower is, is an interesting thing, and some people have it in certain areas and do great, and then they, they absolutely wimp out in others. You know, you may have all kinds of willpower when it comes to your diet or to exercise or to whatever, and yet when nobody's around, you cuss like a sailor, right? I mean, you know, that's the thing. Um, by the way, if, if I ever visit you in the hospital and you're on morphine, and you cuss, I will not hold it against you. I say this from experience, okay? Uh, it's a thing. It happens. Um, just letting you know. So uh, morphine's an interesting drug. But, you know, you may be real disciplined and, and have integrity at work and be a horrible spouse or a horrible parent. You know, so we're not always consistent when we do things on our own. But because the power of God to live out a life of holiness comes from him and not from us, we can live a life of integrity. We can be the same person at work and at home and with the neighbors and, you know, out and about. And, you know, there can, we can always be that person because we've been made new. He has made us who we are because we're not the same person we were. You're not the same person that your mother took home from the hospital. If you've given your life to Christ, you, you are changed, right? You are no longer the same person. You have new life in him. Uh, and because of that, you and I can be uh, people of integrity. We can be trustworthy. We can stand on the truth. And in a world where truth and integrity and honesty are not only not going, are not only not here anymore they're not even really celebrated anymore it's you know if it's such a strange world we live in you know now it's all very much about 
putting out a picture of yourself that is probably false just to attract, you know, in social media, you know, followers or whoever it might be. Um, so you've got, you know, filters on, you know, for your photos and all this sort of stuff. So you, nobody puts up the reality. It's not there. It's been like that for years on magazine covers. Right? Never trust a magazine cover. It's just, it's not real. Um, even before there were digital effects, you know, they go in and airbrush stuff. I mean, that, that's, that's not, that, that it doesn't, doesn't work. We, Don and I years ago saw a great, um, it was a behind the scenes things on advertising and it was a, they were showing before and after pictures for like exercise program or a diet or something. And they used the same guy the same day to take before and after. It just had to do with his posture. And then they went in and did a little bit of airbrushing. And, you know, he was in pretty good shape. So they made him look worse than he was for the before. And then they made him look a little bit better than he was for the after. But they shot him all the same afternoon. You know, so you can't, the world, what the world projects, guys, is a lie. Because Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He's also the father of lies. And, I mean, that's how the whole thing got started. Um, the only trustworthy worthy thing we have is God and his word. And we're to reflect that in our honesty. So, here's what I wrote. Because all of this is, is prompted because they're mad that Paul's plans changed. Right? Well, I wrote that while our plans and circumstances may change, God never changes. And since God never changes, if our integrity is based on our relationship with him, then we will be consistent. Our yes will be yes, and our no will be no. So while circumstances change, God never changes. Therefore, our integrity and the truth that we follow never changes. So think about this idea of God never changing. Uh, James 1.17. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. Or... If you like King James, because this is where the song comes from, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. That's, that's the phrase we sing, no shadow of turning with thee. Or Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. So his truth, the truth, is always the truth, and we as his children are to live that out. And what we say, and what we do, and what we believe, what we encourage other people to believe, and what we share with them. Uh, and that's becoming more and more important. As, you know, social media is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. There's too much money involved in, in all of that. Um, Facebook will always be around. You know, it might get broken up, you know, like Bell Labs or whatever it did years ago. But it'll, it's, it's not going anywhere. There's too much money involved. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever other social media pops up, conversations with one another, websites we visit or recommend, whatever it is, we need to absolutely make sure that we are sharing the truth. So that means a little extra work for us as believers before you share a story, before you share a picture, before you talk about, you know, whether it's, you know, political or whether it's, you know, a social issue or whatever it is, make sure that that thing, that if you're sharing a quote on social media, double check that person actually said it. A lot of times they haven't. Um, they'll just tag some, put somebody's name on it that sounds famous or like it may sound like something they've said and then you share it and a few people are going are gonna to look at it and then they're going to think, well, they, they, don't really, they don't even know what they believe. They're just sharing stuff and don't even know where it comes from. We have got to be people of integrity because the world is lost and they need to know that Christ makes a difference and they need to understand that truth. So we need to be people of truth in all areas of our life, every part. So, well, guys, that is uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 15 through 22. Those of you who were uh, on Facebook tonight or YouTube tomorrow, thank you all for being with us. If you have any questions, send us an email to john, J-O-H-N, at mycbcc.org. And uh, I got to, by the way, I got to give my email to somebody. Uh, this is for another issue. Somebody called the church and needed to send me an email, and it felt weird giving it over the phone. 
I thought, shouldn't you know this? But they don't go here. I'm like, so I'm saying my email, you know, I say it so much. I thought, this feels odd saying it over the phone and rather than in the sanctuary. But send us an email or a Facebook message and uh, we can answer any questions you might have. But we're going to log off now and go to our prayer request time. But thank you all for being here.